Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick, the host of the Echo Academy podcast, a podcast dedicated to tapping into the world's collective experience and wisdom so that we can all learn to be more resilient. Over the next few weeks, I'd like to do something different. I'd like to tap into my experience. I'm really excited to share the next episodes of the Echo Academy podcast. Since October 10 is World Mental Health Day, I thought I'd take some time to share my experience with depression. More specifically, what I've learned from it. In this episode, I want to focus on the concept of acceptance. It's been said that accepting you have a problem is an important step in overcoming it. But from my experience, it would seem that it's only the first layer. In this episode, I want to share with you what those layers are. But quick disclaimer, I'm not an expert on mental health. I'm simply someone, like many out there, who has experienced it personally. And I'm now sharing that experience. So, here's my thoughts on the concept of acceptance. If there's one thing my experience with clinical depression has taught me is that acceptance has multiple layers. Many of us may say that accepting that we have a problem is the hardest but most important thing we can do. This is true, but I think it's only really the first layer. In my experience, there are three layers of acceptance. Or maybe there are more, but my experience has enlightened me to just these three. And only after I accepted all three layers was I able to work towards overcoming my struggles with limited obstacles in my way. The first layer, as I've alluded to, is accepting that I had a problem. For a long while, I didn't want to accept that I had depression. At first, I just didn't realize I had it. I thought it was one of those feelings that would subside eventually and that time would be the one to do the healing for me. But I think the best example I can give of this was when my first ever relationship was at its end. I remember my then-girlfriend suggesting that maybe I was suffering from depression. And I remember thinking to myself, man, who the fuck does she think she is telling me I have depression? At that point, I assumed it was ammunition to put a fatal bullet to our relationship. But looking back, it was clear. It's always the people closest to you who can see the part of you you try to hide from yourself. For me, it was only when I entered the army that I fully accept that I was suffering from some sort of mental health issue. After three years of feeling this way, I finally went past the first layer of acceptance. And this was clearly the part I was trying to hide from myself. So for a long time, I was the one that was standing in the way of my own recovery. Which leads me to the second layer of acceptance. Accepting your problem is legitimate regardless of what other people say. The stigma of mental health issues is still around, and I'm pretty sure it'll be around for a while. Great strides have been taken to normalize it, of course, and that's a great thing. But when pockets of people, especially people who hold power over you, still operate with their own biases, it can have negative outcomes. And there were many people along the way who had ignorant things to say when I articulated my suffering. But none had greater impact than a doctor I interacted with when I was in the army. By the time I had got to him, I was mentally spent. I was suffering so much mentally that my brain had shut down, as if to protect itself from the world around me. I knew something was wrong and I was desperate to get help. So I visited the medical officer under the guise that I was feeling sick. 
But when I entered the room, I tried my very best to explain my suffering. Now, in fairness to him, I was terrible at articulating it. But I remember at the end, I mentioned to him, listen, I doubt you would have all the answers I'm looking for, but maybe you can point me in the direction of someone who might. For those who haven't been to the army, it almost feels like most medical officers approach every patient from a point of skepticism. But I felt his skepticism was clearly multiplied by the fact that he didn't believe in the severity of what I was going through. So his response was to excuse me from all physical activities for the day and to try and relax for the next few weeks. As a result of my mental suffering, by the way, he was trying to excuse me from physical activities. He said, you should get better after that. Now, the stupid, naive me chose to believe him. He minimized my suffering. And as a result, so did I. And as I got worse over the next couple of years, I kept it to myself, not knowing who I could turn to. Because if a doctor couldn't help me, who could? It was only in 2011, when I was about to attempt suicide, standing on the ledge at a hotel, did I finally acknowledge the importance of accepting that I had a problem regardless of what other people said. You see, what people don't understand is that they don't have to live with the consequences of their actions or inactions when it comes to someone else's suffering. So when he told me whatever he had to tell me or whatever he felt was right to tell me, I realized that that was not something I should have paid attention to because it was my consequence and I was lucky I didn't have to pay a higher price for it. So don't ever let someone else decide the magnitude of your suffering because you know best, not them. And this leads me to the final layer of acceptance. Accepting that you don't have to overcome your challenges alone. It's okay to ask for help. And it's okay to seek out the help of people who know how to help you. There are no prizes for fighting your demons alone. There is only the pain of wishing that someone was there with you sooner. Once I started getting professional help, everything changed for me. Now, this is not to say that the road to recovery was easy, but it really helped that my psychiatrist was able to walk me through the process. One of the things I found about getting professional help was I finally felt at peace not knowing all the answers because there was someone in my corner who did, or at least who knew much more than me. And even if he didn't know what steps to take, we could find that out together. Also, the unintended benefit of this process of getting help was that the healing journey allowed me to better articulate what I was going through to the people closest to me. And that helped a lot because I realized that there were so many loved ones who were ready and willing to help in whatever small way they could. But up until then, I couldn't express how I really felt. And as such, it was hard for others to know what to do. So when I reflected on my mental health journey, I finally understood why the recovery process took so long for me. It was because it took me a while to go through each layer of acceptance. The first layer was to accept that I had a problem. The second was to accept that it was legitimate, regardless of the opinions of others. And the third was just accepting that help is a normal part of the process and you shouldn't be shy about asking for it. And I think these three layers of acceptance is applicable to any challenge in life. I've used it in other aspects of my life too. But since this is the month of World Mental Health Day, I thought I'd share this so that all of you who are going through mental health difficulties can perhaps think about whether you fully accepted what you're going through. Thanks so much for listening.